Aikui, Nick Melina, and this is my channel, The Midnight Librarian, and today I'll be talking about my anticipated anticipated releases for April 2024. I can't believe we're already to April. It's crazy to me, but I'm still enjoying this series, so um, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you aren't, if this is your first time here, hi, welcome. Um, basically, it's not. I don't think it's anything new. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that isn't how already been done on book two, but basically I am letting you know of my most anticipated releases for April of 2024. I have January, March, January, February, and March already up if you want to go check them out and are looking for something to read. I feel like everyone has their unique books that they're particularly interested in looking for and I feel like adding more to it isn't gonna hurt. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started. We have a s couple of books about four books for April 2nd and the first is You Are Here by edited by Ada Lyman or Lemon. Here let me scoop so I can put the thing up here. But basically uh, this is a collection of poetry um, by 50 of the most celebrated contemporary writers reflecting on our relationship to the natural world. Um, I'm a little hesitant when it comes to poetry just because with the, similarly to fantasy and science fiction, I feel I have this insecurity that I'm not smart enough to understand like subtle subtlety or um, the nuances of some things. So particularly when it comes to poetry, I'm working on it in terms of fantasy and sci-fi. Um, poetry tends to be like my Achilles heel just because um, that insecurity is rooted in that English wasn't my best subject. So yeah, but I'm, I'm still interested and I feel like this one's been out for a while um, but it does come out April 2nd but it's just because I've seen this cover like everywhere in my Instagram feed <laughs> for several months now. Next we have The North Line by Matt Riordan. This is a debut thriller mystery where we are our main character Adam has decided to earn some quick money by joining an Alaskan fishing boat in the unforgiving Bering Sea. Now he is reveling in the experience of get, getting fish from the ocean but also the camaraderie that comes with that and being in close quarters on a fishing vessel. However, something's happening. There is a strike and there is violence and so there he is on rocky shores of sorts um, when trying to handle this new career path. So I'm fairly interested in this. Um, not only for myself, but for my fiance Brad. He's very much a fisherman. Um, never like this, <laughs> but we are both interested in those uh, reality TV series that are on Discovery with like a bunch of people on f fishing vessels and are constantly competing with one another to get like the most, the most. <laughs> Um, whether it's like tuna or Alaskan crab. In fact, there was one that was based up in Newport, Oregon for Dungeness crab. Um, it's just something we like to break up our typical watching with uh, occasionally. So this one has us, has me particularly intrigued and maybe him too. I haven't told him about it yet. <laughs> Next we have the, un the Cemetery of Untold Stories by Julia Alvarez. In this one we are following Alma Cruz who doesn't want to end up like her friend, a novelist who fought so long and hard to finish her story that it jeopardized her sanity. So when Alma ends up um, inheriting a plot of land in the Dominican Republic, her homeland, she uses this, uses this as a place to bury her untold stories, like literally. She creates a graveyard of manuscripts, drafts, and revisions, and the characters whose lives she's tried and failed to bring to life and who still haunt her. This is all I really want to know about this. This is magical realism in a book about books so that just in general has me intrigued but what really brought me in was the title. Um, the cover not so much. I'm kind of on the fence about it but still fairly intrigued. And then the final one for April 2nd is on fiction about ships and this is A History of the World in 12 Shipwrecks by David Gibbons who is a renowned underwater archaeologist 
who is basically ties together the stories of some of the most significant shipwrecks in time to form a single overarching narrative of the world and that's I think being fairly sim simplistic about this synopsis but I think it's a simplistic idea of trying to retain a history of the world within 12 shipwrecks but I think it'll be really interesting particularly this is another one that I think my that Brad will be particularly interested in but I'm also interested because of that. Next we have another small handful of books coming out in April 9th. The first being The Age of Magical Overthinking, Notes on Modern Irrationality by Amanda Montel who is the author of Cultish which I have recently got my hands on through Libro and so hope to read soon. But this one in particular, uh, in particular sounds... I don't know how soon I'll get to this. Just reading the synopsis, magical thinking can be broadly defined as the belief that one's internal thoughts can affect unrelated events in the, ex in the external. Think of the conviction that one can manifest their way out of poverty, stave off cancer with positive vibes, thwart the apocalypse by learning to can their own peaches, or transform an unhealthy relationship to a glorious one with, a, with loyalty alone. In all its forms, magical thinking works in service of restoring agency amid chaos, but in the age of magical overthinking, Montel argues that in this in the modern information age, our brain's coping mechanisms have been overloaded and irrationally turned up to an eleven. And the reason that I I'm hesitant is just because I have done things like that, right? I think we all have to some extent or another of just hoping, thinking that if I do things a certain way or think hard enough or how, if you want to call it praying hard enough that certain things will happen. Um, so I have a feeling it's going to be a little slap of reality and I'm not sure if I want to face that yet. But I'm very curious about it. I think the synopsis sounds very intriguing and of course I've heard great things about cultish um, in and of itself so that <laughs> um, that's also just had me intrigued with the cover reveal of this title. So uh, next we have one that's probably going to be on a lot of people's lists and that is Lee Bardugo's newest release which is The Familiar which is a fantasy historical fiction um, about a house servant who is able to do a bit of magic. Um, we're in Madrid following Luzia who uses scraps of magic to get through her days of endless toil as a scullion um, but when her scheming mistress discovers that she can do these she uses her as a way to um, better the family's social position. However this simple amuse amusement for born nobility turns perilous when um, Luzia garners the notice of Antonio Perez who is a disgraced secretary to the Spain's king who is still reeling from the defeat of his armada, the king desperate to for any advantage against the war against England's heretic queen, Perez will stop at nothing to regain the king's favor. Um, I'm intrigued by it just because it's Lee Bardugo even though I've only ever I've only read the Alex Stern series um, so um, Ninth House and Hellbent I have Six of Crows but I haven't read it. Um, my mom has read uh, the one that comes, the Grisha verse series um, and I think I'm just overall just curious about this to see how I overall view Lee Bardugo's work outside of the Alex Stern series. Um, but I do hope to eventually get to the Six of Crows at some point but we'll see. This The familiar might be one that I wait on to see how others react to it just because I'm so unfamiliar with Lee Bardugo's work. Next we have one that I'm not going to talk much about. Uh, this is Ghost Station by S.A. Barnes and the reason I'm not going to talk much about it is because reading the synopsis it makes me think that it's a continuation of sorts of Dead Silence which I haven't read yet. Um, actually it's still on these shelves like right there. Um, <laughs> and I'm still intrigued by it. This is another horror science fiction set up in space. Um, space exploration can be lonely and isolating. Psychologist Dr. Ophelia Bray has dedicated her life to study the prevention of ERS, a space-based condition most famous for a case that resulted in the brutal murders of 29 people. 
that's all I really want to know about it just because that sound that particular <laughs> that case I believe is from um dead silence and I want to read that first it doesn't say here in goodreads that they have any connection but I feel like it's maybe in the same universe even if you don't have to read dead silence before ghost station but that's all I'm gonna read just in case just so I don't spoil it myself so that's all I'm gonna really say about it I am intrigued by the angle and the position or angle of, and the name of ghost station uh, so yeah it'll it'll be there it's on my radar <laughs> Next we have Bless Your Heart by Lindy Ryan, horror mystery dealing with vampires. We are following, I believe, a family, the Owen Evans family, who in 1999, Southeast Texas, um, they own a funeral parlor, particularly their matriarch. Um, I don't know if it's Ducky, Ducey, or Dussy, <laughs> has done it for the last 80 years, and her progeny, Lenore, the experimenter, and Grace, Lenore's soft-hearted daughter, have run the par the funeral parlor for the last 15 years without drama. But ever since that god-awful mess uh, that left the two bodies in the ground and Grace raising her infant daughter Luna alone, but when town gossip Mina Jean's Murphy's body is brought in for a regular burial, she rises from the dead instead. It's clear that Strigoi, the original vampires, are back and the Evans women are the ones who need to fight back to protect their, uh, or their town. So this one sounds really intriguing. I'm really curious about this one. Um, my only hesitancy is the covers. Uh, both options for the covers I'm not interested in. Um, <laughs> I get that this is the current style that everyone that seems to be trending in book covers but I'm not the biggest fan and the other one it's just I don't know what to say about it. Okay. Next we have The Twilight Garden by Sarah Nisha Adams. This one we are in a city a, where a community garden has been neglected. Um, it's in between the houses of number 77 and 79 in Eastbourne, on Eastbourne Road. Um, once vibrant and welcoming the sanctuary for people when they needed it, most the garden's gate is firmly closed. I believe one of the neighbors is wanting to maintain that it stays closed. But when but it only takes a small seed of an idea for big changes to happen and as the neighbors need for connection grows the twilight garden becomes uh, comes out of hibernation i believe something's happening within the neighborhood and there's one neighbor in particular who is trying to get this neighbor to unlock the garden again the cover kind of has me on the fence like i'm really kind of intrigued by it but it's giving this like magical nest that i don't think is necessarily there the final one for April 9th is The Fellowship of Puzzle Makers by Samuel Burr. We are following Clayton Stumper, who is 26 years old, but dresses like your grandpa and drinks like your aunt. Um, abandoned at birth on the steps of the Fellowship of Puzzle Makers, he was raised by a group of eccentric and enigma enigmatologists and now finds himself among the last survivors of a fading institution. Um, esteemed crossword compiler and main maternal presence in Clayton's life, Pippa Alsbrook passes away and bestows her final puzzle onto Clayton, where it is to reveal the mystery of his parentage and prepare him for a life beyond the walls of the commune. However, it also leads him to discover some secrets that even um, the rest of the fellowship have never been able to solve and it has potential to change everything and it's supposedly a cozy mystery um and i think it'll be like i don't know i think it'll be a fun popcorn read next we're getting into april 16th where we have indian burial ground by nick medina where we are following naomi bruce browsard who wants nothing but a fresh start with her new boyfriend to move off the reservation um but before she can before thing, when fine, things are finally looking up, her new boyfriend is found dead um, by apparent suicide, which has her world crumbling down. But the facts about Rat, Rat Roddy's death 
just don't add up and Naomi isn't the only one that suspects something menacing is lurking within the tribal lands. From my understanding this is in the south, set in the southeast of sorts in um, the United States so I'm fairly curious about it. The I love the play in, in the cover and this is one of my 24 of 2024 so I have a particular interest within and anticipation of it. Um, I haven't read any Nick Medina's work. I know I think it's Lost Sisters is, was his previous work for 2023 and I just haven't gotten to it yet. So uh, next is the other another 2020, 24 of 2024 book pick. Um, which is One of Us Knows by Alyssa Cole. This is Alyssa Cole's latest thriller mystery. I have read When No One Is Watching and it wasn't that bad. It wasn't too bad. I didn't mind it. Um, there was like an anticipatory, an anticipatory like thrill to it um, but it was also kind of claustrophobic and like frustrating. So <laughs> I'm not sure if I entirely enjoyed the emotional response that I had to it. Anyway, but this one, no, One of Us Knows, we're following Ken who is Kenetria Nash who is diagnosed with disassociative identity disorder that has derailed her derailed her historical pres preservationist career so now she is given a second chance um, that she can't refuse as a care as a resident caretaker for a historic home that has been dormant for years but a surprise visit from the home's conservation trust has just as a nor'easter bears down on the island, disrupts her newfound life, leaving Ken trapped it with a group of possibly dangerous strangers, including the man who brought her life tumbling down years earlier. So when he turns up dead, Ken is the prime suspect. Yeah, another one I'm really curious about. I enjoyed, like I said, I for the most part enjoyed when no one was watching. I have tried the Reluctant Royal series by Alyssa Cole and just didn't I read the first one and couldn't get into the rest of the series so next I'm really excited about this one but I am gonna butcher the the title of it so my apologies is Sheen Lende Sheen Lende I'm not entirely sure but this is a lots away number two by Dropsy Little Badger and illustrated by Ravina Kai we are following Shane who works with her mother and their ghost dogs to track down missing persons um even if the families can't afford to pay their own family was displaced from their traditional home years ago due to a flood and they don't know if they're ever going to be able to go back. Um, but when Shane's mother and a local boy go missing after a strange interaction with a fairy ring, Shane, her brother and her friends and her lone surviving grandparent, um, who isn't to be trusted, set off on the road to find them. But they may not be anywhere in this world or in this place of time. Nevertheless, Shane is going to find them. I'm really kind of excited about this. I loved a lot, so it's one of my favorite all time, <laughs> favorite books of all time. Um, I was admittedly a little scared just because I felt like a lot so I didn't need a sequel but from my understanding I believe this is a prequel of sorts where we're following someone in L who is the main character we follow in a lot's of ways like I don't know if it's like someone she's descended descended from or I'm not entirely sure but I don't really care because after reading the synopsis I'm just excited for it <laughs> I'm ready for another Darcy little badger Next we're on to April 23rd and the first is a nonfiction by Amy Tan who wrote The Joy Luck Club and The Bone Sitter's Daughter as well as has an extensive um, list to her 
uh, repertoire, but those are the only two that I read from her. Um, but this is the Backyard Bird Chronicles, um, and basically it's a gorgeous and witty account of burning nature and the beauty around us that hides in plain sight. And this is due to when 2016 Amy Tan was feeling very like disheartened with all the negativity and hate that was going on on social media, and so turned to her backyard and what became as just a little like passion project of looking and seeing, of trying to find solace in the natural world around her has turned into this. So I'm kind of really, I'm pretty excited about it. I have read other, not only have I read Amy Tan, but I have read other nonfiction books about birds and have enjoyed them for the most part. I personally enjoy um, picking out bird um, calls when I'm out and about. So this is, I think this will be fun. Next we have the Dead Cat Tail Assassins by P. Jale Clark. This is another novella of his. Um, I have read Ring Shout, which I really enjoyed. I have tried reading The Black God's Drum, but haven't gotten through it all the way. I have it around here somewhere. I should take another look at that. I'm not sure why, uh, but this one in particular, I believe, is about undead assassins um, who live by a certain Cree um, and they are supposed to have their memories wiped, but we're following particularly a assassin who remembers her mer memories but has to stick to the Cree. so there's some I don't know that's all I really want to know so I'm really curious about it and I want to read more from J uh, P. Jolet Clark I haven't heard the best of things from his full-length novels but I'm still very interested in his other works um, this is another one that's going to be, I think, on a lot of people's lists, and that is Funny Story by Emily Henry. I have read all of Emily Henry's adult romance backlist, and there was like one I gave two star, and that was Beach Read, but all the rest of them I've given uh, four or above. So Funny Story, we're following a woman who ends up, whose fiance realizes that he's in love with his childhood best friend, and so he leaves her after she moves, leaves our main character as after she like moves to his hometown. Um, so even though she now she ha is in a place where she has no friends or family, but she's in her dream job. So she ends up trying to get a roommate to help pay for the bills because unfortunately her dream job doesn't pay all the bills. Um, and <laughs> the roommate that she ends up getting is actually her, the ex fiance of the woman her ex had left her for. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> so of course he'll probably understand what she's going through. That's all I know. That's all I really want to know. I'm very curious about it. Of course it has this typical illustrations cover that Emily Henry's work, uh, adult romance tends to have, which I'm not the biggest fan of, but I'm really, I'm really excited for this book. So next we have Ocean's Godori by Elaine U. Cho. Um, this one science fiction romance and possibly queer. I'm just gonna have to review the synopsis because I don't think I can explain it any any better way. Um, Ocean Yoon has never felt like much of a Korean even if she is descended from a long line of Hain Yeo, Jeju Island's beloved female divers. She's also a persona non grata f at the Alliance Korea's solar system dominating space agency since a mission went awry and she earned a reputation for being a little too quick with her gun. When her best friend Tio, second son of the Anan Tech Empire, is framed for murdering his family, Ocean and her misfit crewmates are pushed to the forefront of a high stakes ideological conflict. But dodging bullets and winning space chases may be the easiest part of what comes next. And that's all I really want to know. This cover is stunning to me. I absolutely love these covers, these colors. Um, and I'm really curious about this. So next we have Kill Her Twice by Stacey Lee. This is the same author as The Downstairs Girl, which I enjoyed. It was a historical fiction um, from a perspective that I don't think we really get in terms of like Chinese and Western. Stacy Lee actually has quite an extensive um, backlist, but I don't think I've read anything, but I'm really curious about this new release, which is also historical fiction uh, mystery. And it's also YA, which I think should still be interesting. We're in Los Angeles, 1932. Lulu Wong is the star of the silver screen and a pride of Chinatown. Former classmates and neighbors, May 
Gemma and Peony end up finding her body they instantly know it's Lulu and they suspect that the de death is the result of foul play but LAPD known to being corrupt to the core doesn't seem motivated to investigate um even worse there are signs to point that there's a cover-up and powerful forces that want the city to frame the killing as evidence that Chinatown is a den of inequity and crime even more reason that it should be demolished to make room for the construction of a new railway depot union station. I've really been enjoying historical fiction and I think this is kind of just up that I mean obviously it's a historical fiction but it's kind of right up that alley um, and I'm enjoying historical fiction from alternate perspectives. Um, this cover is just everything it's really gorgeous I really enjoy it and I think this will be a really fun read next we have a letter to the luminous deep by Sylvie Cathrall this is the first book and I believe a debut novel um, to the sunken archive which I so I assume this is gonna be a series this is a fantasy romance um, with a bit of a cozy mystery element to it I'm kind of I enjoy the cover but I'm kind of it's not giving me the mood that the synopsis is. From my understanding we're following E for a while who is reclusive but begins correspondence with a renowned scholar Henry Sell um, who I believe both have underwater homes. Sorry my camera stopped recording so I'm not entirely sure where it stopped um, but basically we so E and it lives in underwater in an underwater home this is fantasy um and her and henry correspond they find that they're uh have mutual interests and eventually they end up falling for each other but when there is an underwater sea quake that destroys E's home her and henry essentially disappear years later um sisters E's sister sophie and henry's brother viren are left to solve the mystery of their siblings disappearance with the letters sketches and field notes that were left behind as they uncover wondrous love of their siblings shared Sophie and Viren learned the key to their disappearance and what it could mean to life as they know it uh, so like I, said, I don't I liking the cover is just a little too bright for I think what's going on I don't know I'll have to read it to see but I'm fairly obvious I mean yeah I'm intrigued with all of these. I'm sorry if I keep saying that. Oh, and that one actually comes out April 25th um, rather than the 23rd, so my apologies. Lastly, we have a book that, the last book is April 30th, or comes out April 30th, 30th and it's The Vanishing Station by Anna Eric Ellert, Ellickson, um, which is a fantasy young adult, and we are following 18-year-old Filipino-American Ruby Santos, who is unmoored when since the death of her mother um her and her father have had to move into their basement and rent out the top floor to be able to help pay for her mother's medical bills um but soon um Ruby realizes that her father was living a different life in terms of having a job where he jumps trains to help deliver packages for a powerful family and recently he is getting behind on deliveries and more into alcoholism so Ruby agrees to help with his deliveries and finds that there is a magic to jumping trains and that there is a whole nother world essentially to jumping trains that is dark and dangerous and she soon realizes that she is in over her head. So again the cover I'm a little on the fence about but otherwise I think this will be really interesting <laughs> and that is the that is it for um the book's that I am most anticipated for April. Um, if you're interested in any of these, please let me know. If there are ones that you're interested in that I didn't mention, please list them down below. I'm interested to check them out. Otherwise, if, if you don't have the spoons to answer either of those questions, let's go ahead and put a train emoji for the Vanishing Station. Um, yeah. Uh, thank you so much for watching and supporting. Like this video, subscribe if you haven't yet to do so and I hope that you are in the mental mindset to enjoy your reading. I will see you in another video very soon. Cheers.